This is chapter 5.1, quick review, exercise 1 through 12, page 451. Again, we're going into the section on the identities of trigonometry using them. In exercise 1 through 4, evaluate the expression, give answers in degrees and in radians. And here we have the inverse sine, the sine of the negative 1 power thing, that's the inverse sine of the fraction uh, 12 thirteenths. So if we draw a unit circle here, we have on the unit circle our points are in terms of sine and cosine. Cosine is the x value and sine is the y value. And so here at the top circle we have an x value of 0 which are cosine value and a y value which are sine value of 1 and 12 thirteenths is 12 thirteenths of the way up we can look like about right here and then go over to the right until we hit the unit circle so this angle here which we're going to call theta is going to be the inverse sine of 12 thirteenths and we're going to write this out theta equals sine negative 1 which is inverse sine of 12 over 13 and it says degrees and in radians but if we go here we see our calculator is in degrees and getting out of the escaping we're going to get a calculator page and we just use our calculator we go to the trig button on the left and go down to sine negative 1 of we take the fraction of 12 thirteenths and we get 67.3801 degrees 67.3801 degrees which we have to look at just eyeballing our drawing looks like that looks like it could be a correct answer. Now I convert into radians. We're trying to convert into radians. Well, if we go halfway around the unit circle, uh, that's going to be 180 degrees, which is equal to pi. Remember, circumference is going to be of circle is is two pi r. Well, halfway around is just is just pi. So. Uh, to convert this, we put 180 degrees equals pi radians. If we uh, go ahead and divide by 180 degrees, we're going to get our conversion factor. So if we take this 67.3801 degrees, and multiply this by pi radians over 180 degrees, what happens to our degrees? Cancellation. So in radians, all we have to do is take times, which gives us the last thing calculated, which, which is the 67.301, times pi, which we get in the lower left, pi divided by 180 degrees, and we get 1.17601 radians. An RAD for uh, an abbreviation. And I put the approximately equal to because with, with most of these angles we're talking about irrational numbers. And so this, this radi in radians, this arc length is essentially 1.176 times the radius of the circle. All right, on to problem three. Next odd number problem we have here times the inverse cosine of four fifths. I'm just drawing a really rough unit circle. If we go to the right, four fifths of the way means in going up to the circle we have a cosine value of four-fifths and that angle is going to be 
right here that I've marked in red. And so theta equals cosine negative one or four fifths. And going to our calculator, we put in trig cosine negative one, control, we put four over five, and there we have it. We get 36.8699 degrees. 36. Point, what we say that was? 86.99. 86.99. Ninety nine degrees, and to convert this into radians, we'll take thirty six point eighty six ninety nine degrees times pi radians over one hundred eighty degrees, and canceling our degrees, and going to our calculator, we get times pi divided by 180 and we get 0 0.643501 radians 0 0.643501 radians so that's our answer in radians all right degrees and radians Okay, degrees and radians. We're going to go on to our next odd number problem, which is problem number five. Factor the expression into a product of linear factors. We have this thing right here is a quadratic, not linear, quadratic, because of the power of two, trinomial. And usually we want to factor our quadratic trinomials into two linear binomials. And to do that, I'm going to make a little box here that we separate into four cells. And in the upper left corner, we put a squared, which is our left quadratic term. In the lower right corner, we put in b squared. And the factors of a, we figure a squared would be a and a because a times a would be a squared. And now for the factors of b squared, well, we have a choice. We can have either b times b or negative b times negative b. Sometimes it's hard to remember that negative situation. And our middle term, negative 2ab, means that we're going to need to have minus b here and minus b here. So we're going to get. Uh, minus negative or negative a b here in the upper right and negative a b here in the lower left and combining our like terms here we're going to get negative 2 a b and of course we have b squared on the right and left we have a squared so our factors are going to be quantity a minus b times quantity a minus b which we can rewrite as a square, which would be quantity a minus b squared. And either of these versions would uh, fulfill the technicalities of answering this problem. Okay, number seven. A more complicated quadratic trinomial. But again, we're going to try to factor this quadratic trinomial into two linear factors. And to do that, we're going to bring out our box. Now, the good thing about box method, a lot of people don't like it, say it's too unwieldy and large. But one thing about box method is that you check your work as you go. And so our, our first term is going to be 2x squared here in the upper left and minus 2y squared in the lower right. And our factors of 2x squared are going to be 2x and x. And we need to find the factors of 2y squared that make this work. Well, factors of 2y squared are going to be negative 2y times y or negative y times 2y. And so just simply 
putting them out here, if we just try these out, well, I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put these in red here. I put negative two y on top, and I'm going to put y over here. Well, x times negative two y is going to be negative two x y, and over here two x times y is going to be two x y. And if we combine these like terms, these will cancel each other out. But we need to have this negative three x y, so these aren't going to work. So what we're going to do is go back. That's the neat thing about this thing. I can just go back in history. I'm going to put uh, negative 2y here on the left and y here in the upper right. And y times x is going to be xy. And negative 2y times 2x could be negative 4xy. And if we combine these like terms, negative 4xy plus xy, that's going to be equal to, uh, that's going to be negative 3 xy, which makes sense, and we're going to have minus 2y squared here and 2x squared here, so this is going to work. So we're going to have quantity 2x plus y times quantity x minus 2y, and so this would be our answer to number 7. All right, uh, number 9, an exercise 9 through 12, simplify the expression. And we have two fractions, 1 over x minus 2 over y. And to make this work out, we're going to find a common denominator. And to find a common denominator, what we do is multiply our two denominators together. We're guaranteed of that. So using x and y together, we have a common denominator of xy here and xy. And then cross multiplying our y times 1 will be y over here on the left in the numerator. and x times negative 2 is going to be minus 2x. And combining, using our common denominator of xy, we're going to end up with, over xy, we're going to have y minus 2. And finally, we're going to check. And this is simplified just about as we're going to be able to make this. To check, we're going to store a value for x. We're going to put 3 storage x enter, so we stored the value of 3 for x, and 4, control of r's, y. And so we stored 3 for x and 4 for y, and we're going to go back to our first problem here, 1 over x minus 2 over y, and enter these in the calculator. So 1 over x And it's going to be minus our fraction here, 2 over y. And we get negative 1 sixth. And we're going to go to our answer. We're going to enter this on the right. y minus 2, I forgot to put 2x. 2x, yeah, okay y minus 2x over xy. So we go here, control here. Okay, y minus 2x over xy. I'm just going to put xy here. And we press enter. Oops, no value assigned to variable. Use one of the following commands. What happens the calculator is seeing this x, y as, a, as text. So we're going to re-enter this using x times y. So we're going to put y minus 2x, just like we did earlier, over this time x times y. And we get negative 1 6, which is the same as we had originally, confirming the correctness of our of our answer here. Okay. There we go. Uh, problem number 11. We have this fraction here, more complicated. We're going to have, I'm going to rewrite this as x plus y over 1 over x plus 1 over y. That's what this is, just kind of written more formally. And we're going to 
work on our common denominator in the denominator. And so I'm going to bring across the numerator here, x plus y, and the denominator, our common denominator between x and y here is going to be xy. And then that's going to be plus common denominator xy. And here cross multiplying we're going to have y and cross multiplying here we're going to have x. I'm going to rewrite that on the left a little bit more neatly because that's really not super clear. Okay, we have y over xy. Okay, and now using our common denominator in the denominator, we're going to bring x plus y here on the top, and we're going to combine. We're going to have y plus x over xy. And so this operation, you see using this common denominator, we have this now. We're going to try to simplify by multiplying. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by reciprocal. So we bring our, denominator, our numerator here, x plus y. We're going to wrap this up in parentheses. Times the reciprocal of y plus x over xy is going to be xy over y plus x. And what happens here? Well, we have x plus y over y plus x, and these two things are the same thing, so we can cancel. So we're going to be left with simply xy. And now we can, and this happens in, in, uh, in simplifying using trigonometric identities and solving uh, I, equations in trigonometry. They simplify quite often. And so rewriting the original fraction and putting the calculator, we already stored 3 for x and 4 for y. We put control storage, we put x plus y in the numerator, and over, we get a fraction here, control, and we have 1 over x, oops, 1 over x, and we have plus, get our fraction here, 1 over y, and we press enter, we get 12. And so if we go and put in x times y, we should also get 12 if, our, if we did this correctly. So I'm going to do this. We're going to put x. Remember, we just can't put x, y together. We've got to multiply them or else we're going to get an error message. We also get 12, uh, confirming that this will be our correct simplification. So anyway, these are the odd numbered problems in the quick review. Uh, this is a pretty tough section in our trigonometry here, um, in our pre-calculus course. So I hope this has been helpful to you. And I thank you for viewing.